Hello there. Today we're going to talk about one of my most nostalgic and honestly probably one of my favorite brewers, as well as one that I think is probably the most versatile. Today we are talking about the French press. Now a long, long time ago at the birth of this channel, I did a kind of extensive French press video, but that was, as I said, a very long time ago. I have learned a lot. I have a lot more opinions about the French press, and I thought it was time for us to do an overhaul on this brewer. I also feel like the French press is very like trendy right now with the release of some recent brewers. However, this is tried and true. We're going to break down what it is, what it does, and four interesting ways you can use it at home. Now, a little background on the French press. This is what is called a full immersion brewer. Uh, so that means while the coffee is brewing, all of those coffee grounds are in full contact with water for the entire brew time. So this differs from something like a pour over, like a, a Kalita or a Hario or what have you. The French press is known for having a very like kind of thick, rich mouthfeel and body to it. It has a very strong coffee flavor and it's also very easy to use. The French press is a decently old brewer. Um, there are recordings of a French press like style of brewing as early as 1850s, like 1852, I believe is like the marked year. However, the first patents for like this official French press came around the 1920s. So very iconic brewer. Let's break it apart into a couple different pieces. Now there are a lot of French presses in the market to varying degrees of like luxury, <laughs> I suppose. Um, Fellow has a very expensive one. However, this one here is really your baseline. It was like $16, I believe. And they all kind of function similarly. You've got bells and whistles on all different ones. But this is the baseline. You have two main components. You have your main carafe. This is usually made out of glass. And you have your plunger over here. When you look at the bottom, you have a, a very fine metal filter um, that will be later used to withhold the grounds from your brewed coffee. And you also have this like long stick plunger part. The two main positions your French press will sit in is this position and this position. Okay. Let's make some coffee. The number one way you're probably going to be using your French press is to be brewing hot coffee. And this is pretty easy to do. Now, when we are using a French press to brew, I want you to think in terms of ratios rather than like exact numbers. Because this is a very large brewer, there are a lot of different amounts of coffee you can brew. You can brew um, essentially a single cup. You can also brew like a full pot, which is probably going to be enough for two to three people. So ratios rather than exact gram amounts are going to be your friend here. Now, with that being said, there are also quite a few different ways uh, to brew a French press. The mechanics of it are for the most part the same. However, lots of different preferences that either yield a, a thicker, like kind of chewier mouthfeel to it. There's ways to get more clarity in a French press. Um, I'm actually going to link a few other resources and videos in the description that touch on different methods of brewing. Uh, James Hoffman has a, a pretty well-known method. Uh, Lance has a recent French press video. And with all brewing methods, you shouldn't kind of go to just one person. I think there's a lot of value uh, in looking at different brewing methods and then figuring out what you want and what works best for you. So I'm going to call this like a standard <laughs> brewing method, um, but there are a lot of more optimized brewing methods as well. Now, as you're dialing in different coffees and figuring out what French press method works best for you, I think a pretty decent, uh, well-rounded spot to start off with is a one to 15 ratio. So that is one part coffee to 15 parts water. We're going to use a scale today. We use a scale most days, to be clear. One thing that's pretty distinct about French press coffee is that you usually want to grind it a good deal coarser uh, than you do for like a standard filter coffee. So I would consider this to be a medium to coarse grind. As you can see, there's a, a good bit of, of definition there in the grounds. One to 15 ratio. I'm going to use 50 grams of medium coarse coffee and then 750 milliliters of hot water. Coffee in, shake it out a little bit. Now this is some nice hot water. This is sitting at around 96 degrees Celsius or 205 degrees Fahrenheit. Now you could of course kind of unceremoniously dump all of your water in, give it a stir and start brewing. However, I like to give this a little bit of a bloom, not just to be blooming my coffee, but also I like to add an initial amount of water and then make sure all of the grounds are fully saturated. I'm going to add double the weight of coffee and water. I'm add about 100 mils here. 100 mils. Give it a stir. Make sure everything's coated. You'll find that dry coffee likes to kind of stick and clump up around the edges of this brewer. So just make sure you don't have any pockets of dry coffee. Now we're going to add the remaining 650 mils. 
This is a very slow process <laughs> with the stag kettle. Ooh, 751. It was very close. We'll give our coffee one final, very gentle stir just to make sure everything is even. And then pretty immediately, you're gonna wanna put your lid on and make sure that plunger stays in what I'm gonna call the upright position. Now, all we have to do is wait for this to brew. Now on average with French presses uh, of this size, which uh, this is gonna be again, 750 mils of final coffee. This is about like 30, 30 ounces if you're using those measurements. Um, this will of course kind of vary. However, uh, four to five minutes of total brew time is usually about right. So I'm gonna start at four minutes uh, just because I know this coffee performs best around there. And you don't have to do anything. You can set a timer um, and just kind of leave this. So I'll see you in four minutes. I wanna give a huge thank you to Donna for sponsoring today's video. Donna is my home for intentionally crafted and sourced teas. Their best-selling wasala chai concentrate is versatile and delicious with lightly sweetened organic black tea, fresh card cardamom, ginger, cinnamon, black peppercorn, and cloves. All you need is one part concentrate and one part milk, and you've got a drink that's familiar, spiced, and comforting. However, chai is just the beginning. Donna sources teas directly from farms and collectives across the globe. They offer tea blends alongside single origin, so every tea drinker is able to find something they like. My personal favorite is Flirt, an herbal blend of hibiscus, licorice, mint, and chamomile. They also carry high-quality Kyoto matcha for all of your matcha drinking needs. For all all of the care that specialty roasters put into coffee, that's what Donna is to tea. So if this has inspired you to explore the world of tea, you can use code MORGAN25 for 25% off your order at drinkdonna.com. That's MORGAN25 and thank you again to Donna for sponsoring today's video. All right, we are just about to hit the four minute mark. And when that happens, we're gonna be slowly and steadily uh, decreasing the plunger. You don't need to go fast. You don't wanna be agitating or brushing everything around. This is a, a slow and steady scenario. On top of that, when you see and feel yourself start to reach the bottom and that coffee just begins to compact, you wanna stop. We don't need to like press the coffee down into the bottom of the brewer. Let's have at it. And there we have our brewed coffee. Now, this coffee is still quite toasty right now, but let's have a taste. The world's tiniest cup <laughs> for the largest brew of coffee. Let's have a taste. pretty nice cup of French press coffee. Now, as I mentioned before, French press coffee is pretty well known for kind of the, the chew and the tactile of it. It is a pretty heavy cup of coffee and it's more difficult, not impossible, but more difficult to find a lot of clarity in the flavor of coffee. Of course, there are many methods in which you can increase clarity and reduce the amount of like fines and silt you get in your final cup. But as a baseline, when you're starting off, you're making a pretty nice, pretty rich cup of coffee. I find the flavor um, tends to be very coffee-like. Um, when we talk about like perceived like strong cups of coffee versus really fruity cups of coffee, um, this definitely sits on kind of the stronger, more traditional like chocolatey forward profile of coffee. Um, and it performs really well with nice medium and darker roasts. This brewer performs very well with more traditional uh, washed and medium um, and even slightly darker roast profiles. But that's not to say I haven't had some delicious, funky experimental coffees in this brewer as well. But regardless, whatever you put in there, however you brew it, your French press makes some really dang delicious hot coffee. Let's move on to our next tip. All right, we're all reset. The next thing we're gonna do is froth milk in our French press. I made a video, uh, I believe a couple months ago, talking about making really nice milk without an espresso machine and using a hand frother instead. However, if you don't have one of those, but you have a French press, you can do pretty much the same thing. This requires some practice, and some technique. Uh, however, I'm gonna show you how to do it and then you can start practicing at home. Now, the first things we're gonna do, because obviously our French press does not heat milk, it will simply add air to milk, is we're gonna heat up our milk. We're also gonna get an espresso shot ready. An espresso shot ready, I can say that. <laughs> now you can do this with pretty much any milk. I think you will find it easiest with whole milk. So if you are capable of drinking whole milk, uh, give that a go to at least start with. 
I'm just gonna heat up the amount of milk I need. You can do this on the stovetop. However, you can also do it in the microwave. I'll be right back with some more milk and some espresso. Once more, here's a rundown of everything we're gonna need for this. You need a French press, you need some more milk. You need whatever your coffee base will be. It can be drip coffee if you're making an Olay, uh, or if you're making a latte, it will probably be espresso. I have my cup that my latte will be going into. I also have a milk pitcher. Now, a little bit of a note on the milk pitcher. If you do not have a milk pitcher and you are not really aspiring to pour latte art, you don't need one. You can pour your milk directly out of your French press. However, if you're wanting to froth your milk and then pour latte art with it, uh, there is a lot of benefit to having a pitcher. And additionally, we're gonna be doing some milk polishing at the end to make it even glossier and even smoother. So you can use this, you cannot use this. We're gonna use it today and I'll talk about it when we get there. Now, before we dump the milk in, let's talk about the steps we're gonna be doing. This is um, similar in practice to if you are used to steaming milk onto a machine, we are gonna first introduce air into the milk and then we're gonna work on getting that air as incorporated with the rest of the milk as possible. We're gonna be doing this process through movement of the plunger. One of the things that is tricky about using the plunger to add air into your milk is that it's gonna pull in a lot of air really, really fast. So you don't need to spend a lot of time near the surface of your milk adding air. The most of your time is gonna be spent a little bit lower, sunk about halfway into the milk, making tiny movements in order to pull that air from the top through everything else. So to quickly review the actions we're gonna take, we'll add our milk, we're gonna go down, just touching kind of the surface of the milk. We're gonna make one or two or three, just a few light movements to pull in air. You'll see bubbles form at the top. You'll see the milk increase in volume. And then we're gonna go completely under the milk down to about the halfway point and then make small movements. These are small, precise, delicate movements. Not to reach back up to the surface to the milk, but to stay in that in-between section and move all that air around. Let's give it a shot. I'm gonna do this over the sink. No spills, let's go. Okay, to the top of your milk. Plunge lightly, and then go down to the bottom, start making these kind of light movements. Now you'll see me keeping a very close eye as you begin to incorporate that air through the rest of your milk, you'll start to see those large bubbles on top kind of disappear. We're looking for them to be as gone as possible. I feel good about that. Let's remove the plunger. Now, if you're pouring directly into your coffee, I'd recommend giving this a swirl, maybe a few bounces like you would a pitcher. Otherwise, at this point, transfer into your steaming pitcher. We're gonna swirl, lightly bounce it, just to remove any additional air bubbles, just like you would after if you were using a steaming wand. All right, let's give this a go. A nice little latte that I'm very quickly spilling all across my fingers. Let's have a taste. It's pretty lovely. Now in my experience, this method of using a French press to add air to milk is honestly a little bit trickier than even using a hand frother just because there's a lot less control. You're kind of looking in from the outside, trying to get it as smooth as possible. So with that being said, this technique will require a good amount of practice to get somewhere where you can pour latte art, but it's very worthwhile if you are not someone who has extra money to spend on all these additional tools that might make it incrementally easier. However, that is milk with a French press. Let's move on to our third thing. The third thing you can do with your French press, and this is a pretty quick one, is you can brew tea with your French press, because why not? Because your French press has this really lovely filter uh, that works to separate all those fines out from your main brewed coffee, there is no reason that also doesn't work for tea. So if you don't have a teapot, but have some nice loose leaf tea, you can do the same thing this way. I'm actually very excited about this. I've had a lot of coffee today. <laughs> and this, uh, this flirt blend is actually one of my favorite uh, recent teas that I've had. This is a, a very nice hibiscus based tea. So should be some nice color. Simply add your tea. Yeah. 
Then add your preferred amount of water, cap it off, and let it brew. Finally, once your tea is steeped to your liking, once more, slowly plunge. Carefully moving all those tea leaves to the bottom, and then enjoy your tea. It's very nice, but we have one more French press method to get through. Let's move on to our fourth and final French press tip. Okay, the last thing that you can do with your French press that we're gonna talk about today is gonna be making cold brew in your French press. Now, once more, like we talked about with hot coffee, there are all sorts of ways to make cold brew. You can brew it as a concentrate uh, and then dilute it out to your preference. You can brew it just straight up for drinking, but no matter how you do it, you can do it in a French press. Now, I'm gonna use a one to eight ratio here, so this is gonna be a very strong cup of coffee. Uh, some people like that in cold brew. However, if you're like me, I then use it as a, a somewhat concentrate and dilute it out slightly to my preference. But regardless, it's a one to eight ratio. So that means for every one part of coffee, we're gonna be using eight parts water. This happens to be 100 grams of coffee. I will also note that this is ground very, very coarse. Cold brew is a method of making cold or iced coffee. However, uh, it's done over a very long period of time and it's also done at a much cooler temperature. So usually this is done at either room temperature or also like fridge temperature. <laughs> and it usually brews anywhere from like 12 to 18 hours tends to be the average range. Again, this depends on what type of cold brew you're making uh, and also personal preference. Now I have a good, 800 grams slash mils of water here. Now we are gonna unceremoniously dump all of this in. Give this a nice stir. Make sure all those grounds are fully saturated. With cold brew um, specifically, uh, there are often times where coffee likes to clump up and create these little pockets of dry coffee. And so uh, it's nice to give this a, a pretty thorough stir because this is gonna be extracting for a long time. We wanna make sure that everything is extracting, not just some of it. You know the drill by now? Put our little plunger on top. You can stick this on the counter, you can put it in your fridge overnight, however long you have it. And I did this yesterday, <laughs> so we didn't have to wait a full 12 hours because afterwards, cue my other French press coming into screen. This is the, the fellow one with a bit more bells and whistles than our $16 one. Afterwards, when you are done brewing, once more, you simply plunge. This one is slightly less satisfying because you don't get to see the whole plunging process. We've reached the bottom. Let me get a cup. This is a definitely concentrate levels of brewing. Regardless, let's have a sip. Definitely needs to be diluted a little bit, but this is a very nice cold brew concentrate. So with that being said, those are four unique ways that you can use your French press at home. Again, a very versatile brewer, a very foundational brewer. This is where a lot of people start, and I think it's really fun to come back to this. I hope this was fun. I hope this was somewhat educational. Again, I'm gonna link uh, a bunch of resources and also other fellow content creators' videos about French presses down below, because I, I really am firmly a believer of like, start somewhere and then go look at a whole bunch of different things and figure out what's gonna work best for you. That being said, this was fun. I'll see you all next time. My name is Morgan and you can find me here on YouTube once a week, plus YouTube shorts. Uh, you can also find me on TikTok and Instagram pretty much every single day. I'm gonna take this, go dilute it out and enjoy some nice cold beer. I'll see you all next time. Have a good day, everyone.